Hack up. <laughs> All right, so today I'd like to talk about um, my experience of process coaching in the context of the coactive model and Eugene Gendlin's, Gendlin? Gendlin's um, focusing approach. So focusing is well known from this book or well known in some circles. Um, the idea of checking in with your non-explicit systems to process things that are a bit stuck, essentially. So the process is you sit down, you take a moment, you clear some space for yourself, um, you, you kind of ask yourself, what's up right now? What, what is there um, that's on my mind that needs to be looked at? And then each time something comes up, like, oh, my job, oh, my relationship, oh, my health, oh, this, the, the, the car insurance, whatever. You kind of, you put it to one side, you go, yes, there is that, what else is there? You put it to one side um, and you keep going until you get a sense of, yes, that's it. Um, that is everything that is that needs addressing or that needs to be explored. Um, the next step is to pick one. Um, and this is where the focusing steps really come in for me. This is where you kind of, you, you start asking questions of yourself and trying to figure out what exactly it is about those things that made them stand out to you, that made them come up in that way. So there's steps, I won't go into all the steps in detail, but there's resonance, there's getting a handle. Um, what about all of that is the handle? Um, so you're kind of testing ideas with some other part of yourself that seems to know things that you don't have access to, but you're getting, you're getting an idea that this thing exists by the feeling, by something called a felt sense. Um, and the idea of a felt sense shift is really important. So this video is not about focusing. Um, I would do the separate thing on that at some point, but just kind of ad-libbing around um, the different ways that we can access our implicit systems via the felt sense, the value of that felt sense, um, and how we can use that in a kind of a coaching framework. So what's really important in the focusing is that when something comes up, like let's say it's my, um, let's say it's my, my job, or let's say it's a relationship. Um, there's, you know, what does it feel like? What, what about that? What, what, what's the felt sense associated with my relationship? Okay. Well, it feels like X, you kind of go in, you get a sense, okay, this is the pattern of energy it has in my body. Um, and then you kind of come up with a few suggestions, if you like, of what, it, what this might be. Is this, this feels like a kind of sadness or no, and it's not quite sadness. It's, it's more like a kind of despair. Mm, okay, and it's not quite despair. And what I'm doing here is I'm testing to see whether, and this is all fictitious, but this is to see whether the, the felt sense kind of says yes to any of these things. And sometimes it will change um, and you know you're kind of in the right direction. And the whole point here is to keep going back and forth until you have landed on a, on a word or phrase that's close enough um, that um, the felt sense says yes. And there's often at this point, there's a shift. Like you kind of, you're seeing it for the first time and you're recognizing, oh, okay, turns out that I'm feeling X about this topic. And once you've done that, something unlocks itself and you can then carry on either doing more focusing or you can say, okay, that's enough for now. There's been some kind of inner realization, inner shift. Something has been seen that needed to be seen. Now I can carry on. This is very good for stuck emotions, for stuck ideas. And it's the idea of stuckness that I'm, I want to bring in with the, the coactive process coaching. So um, there, there's no mention of focusing in the coactive course and coactive is the coaching framework I did. Um, and one of the modules are called process of so processing emotions, basically. And um, here is focusing the, 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 um, the process coaching in a nutshell. I don't know if I can tell it to focus. It's not a good enough camera. Um, what it's showing basically is an energy pattern that the coach recognizes in the client that highlights that there's some kind of stuckness. And then the idea in process coaching is that you take the client into that stuckness hold them there until some kind of shift happens by itself and then they'll emerge into some kind of new understanding by themselves. So in conversation with a client, um, they might be hovering around a topic and the job of the coach in that context is to hear the thing that they're not saying, the thing that they're not being with and 
probably don't even see in some ways. So it sounds like um, you have trouble with this thing. It sounds like there's this, this the, the stuckness, you can kind of highlight it in some way. And the way the coactive call it is like, coach hears it. And they've actually written it in, in the quote marks. Then the coach names it. So it sounds like fear. It sounds like um, anxiety. It sounds like you don't want this or that kind of a thing. And then the really important step that I think is so interesting with process coaching compared to focusing is that the coach then takes, with permission, takes the client into that, what they call a, um, a, an energy field, almost an energy pattern in the body. So the felt sense, basically, from focusing. So you go into it and then you be there with them. Um, and something I like doing in this context is turning up the felt sense. So sometimes it's quite weak. It's like, oh yeah, it's vaguely something in my chest, it's vaguely something in my stomach. Okay, let's go into it. And now imagine there's a dial. Um, if it's say on a three or a four now, let's just associate this felt sense with that dial in our minds and then turn up that dial. So there's nothing you can do to turn up uh, an emotion or a feeling, but you can assign some kind of imagery to your mind and then use that to link it to the felt sense. So you can't try feeling more, but you can do something else that will encourage or unlock this thing more and more. So you take them into this this energy pattern, this this felt sense, um, and then you just sit there, you just wait, um, and it swirls around. I'm looking at the thing now, you kind of, there's a lot of circular swirling lines around here, just like, okay, wait, wait. Whatever comes up, kind of be with, it will change as time goes on. And then after a few, maybe even a few seconds, a few minutes, whatever, there's often a kind of like a shift in the client, which is the same as the felt sense shift um, in focusing, I think, or very similar at least. And then this is when the classic kind of coaching question of, so what's possible from here kind of thing comes up because at this point there's something new in the client's awareness. There's something that wasn't available before, which came in via the felt sense. And then the work of the, the rest of the coaching session is to come out of that and integrate that learning into whatever the client's topic was um, and kind of go forwards and address whatever the goal or the problem was that they're trying to solve. So I'm really fascinated by this kind of thing um, because it, it, it suggests that there's some other source of knowledge, some other source of wisdom in us that we can't access directly, but is both very present and very important, but also um, needs to be accessed for any real transformation to occur. We can intellectualize all we like and say, yes, I'm feeling sad. And nothing will happen unless you have a, a system for not just saying, oh, I'm sad. You might not be sad. That might be a, a word that is just close enough. It might be even completely wrong. Often when you do focusing, you start with a word that's nowhere near the word that actually triggers the, um, the felt sense shift. Um, and you have to go through this process of resonance, of testing. And the coach has the same thing. So it's in the, in the, in the process coaching, you don't just take them straight there, like you bang the word straight away. Um, you kind of iterate a bit, saying, okay, it's not quite this, not quite that. You kind of do the focusing for them in a way. So you are the, the resonance checker. And then eventually you'll land on something like, oh yeah, that's it. Um, and it's the same, same with the internal focusing version, but often that's a very different place from where you started. Um, now, there's real value, I think, in knowing both approaches. And in the, in the, in the focusing model, you kind of have to be able to go to places on your own. Like, yes, I'm now here. This is a difficult place to be, possibly. Stay here until a shift happens. That is really powerful, but also it can be quite difficult, um, particularly if I think you have it, if you have a history of traumatic experiences um, or you're generally kind of, if you're used to putting up structures in your life to prevent yourself from going to those places, so you're, you distract yourself a lot or you kind of say, I don't go there, then actually going there will, will be a, a challenging experience. I mean, it might not be, but it can it has potential to be a bit difficult. With the coaching version of that, you have a coach there with you who is able to go to those places. And one of the things I loved about the coaching training was that it was experiential. So we've been through all the things personally that we now coach on. And it's a very deep space that you go into some of these places in a group whoever wants to do the same kind of thing. It's a very powerful space for transformation of yourself, which is why I think so many people come out of this and then have massive life shifts. Um, and having a coach who is able to go as far as you can, and if not further, and say, okay, yeah, we're here now, 
this is this is this place let's just stay here for a while together and i will hold the space i will i will take care of everything you don't have to worry about um and i will catch you if you, you know i have a sense of safety and like i will grab you um if you need to be grabbed i don't think you will be um you can do this and it's kind of in, this implicit sense of, of safety and trust that's built up over time you, you wouldn't start with process coaching or if you did it'd be kind of it would be an interesting game to play kind of straight in first session. That's just in process coaching. Um, but it doesn't need to stay long together. Um, just as a, a fundamental level of, of trust and connection has to come up. I'd be curious to see if that truck registers on my um, microphone. So that's it. This is, a, this is just an ad lib video about the idea of, of um, accessing the, the, the felt sense, the implicit system, the different ways of doing it. I'm really like, happy to see there's a connection between these two things. I know there's a connection with this and that Zana technique as well. Um, that has a whole extra dimension of value to it. So I won't go into it now, but the idea that you can use expanded awareness concepts and non-doing and non-engagement with, with the stimulus to not get triggered into, into your habitual, habitual patterns is really cool. So when the idea of the thing comes up that I'm feeling, I'm feeling that thing, it's very easy for us to kind of get totally caught up in it. So we become unconscious for a while. We just go off, we're triggered and then we'll wake up um, have much like time later going up where, where was I for the last five minutes ruminating, ruminating about this thing and it sucks Alexander technique gives you both the tools to recognize that that moment's about to happen and then not let yourself get pulled into it but there's something funny about the expanded awareness thing where it gives you a tool to dial up and down the intensity of these feelings um, so very quickly now and then I'll close um, if you collapse your awareness into an emotion, so all that exists is the felt sense and the emotion, it's really intense and you don't have much freedom to step out of it, to navigate around it, to see it in perspective, or to step out if it is too powerful. And sometimes that does happen. Um, having expanded awareness means that, yes, fine, the, the, the emotion, the felt sense is there. And so is my awareness of the, the sky and that plant and the birds singing, whatever else. And I can turn the world up and down such that I can turn the felt sense up and down as well. And that's really helpful if you're going into a, a difficult experience. You know that you can kind of go like work too much. You can, you can kind of pull out and zoom out if you need to. But you can also conversely zoom in by turning the world down, which is something I don't really talk about very much, but that is something that you have access to when you learn how to play with your awareness. So that's it. Um, just wanted to touch on these two things and see you next time.